Chapter 11. All right, I think we've got everything we need. Mia, you got the tape? Mia raised her hand and twirled the blue roll around her arm like it was a tiny hula hoop. David had gotten a head start with his campaign and had signs all over the school. It was Friday night and Mefren didn't want to wait for the following Monday to put up the posters they'd just made. No way, he decided instead to take the twins back to school with him. The trick would be to get them home before it, was, before it started getting dark. As tempting as it was, he chose to leave his bike behind. Lugging the little ones down the block to their school on his bike was one thing, but there was no way Ama would ever approve of taking them across Civic Center Drive. Maxie, can you drive my posters? Sure. Max wrapped his arms around the posters and was heading toward the door when he froze in place. Oh, wait, he said, running back, running back over to the kitchen table. We almost forgot ours. Efren tossed the black trash bag filled with posters over his back. That's okay, guys. We can leave those two here. You know, tape them to the fridge. The little ones gave him a look. So I can see them every day. Mia held onto her scowl while Max's eyes began to well up. Guilt booted Efren in the gut. What am I thinking? There's no way I can leave the, my two secret weapons at home. These two posters are going to get me elected. Max's brown eyes lit up like shiny pennies while Mia's face softened into a smile. Max didn't waste any time finding a spot for his poster. The second they set foot onto campus, he rushed down the main corridor and claimed a spot over the drinking fountain. Mia looked up at Efren, nodding. He picked a good spot, a really good spot. Wearing a huge smile, she took hold of the tape and bolted after him. Efren waited behind, looking around at the empty halls. There was something different about the place, and not just the lack of, of usual kid-related noise. Nope, there was something else. Even though it had only been about two hours since school had let out, the campus was pretty much abandoned by the time they arrived. The only people visible were the handful of teachers heading out, many hauling teacher supply carts behind them, and Joe, the custodian, putting a water hose in the back of his cart. So this is what happens after hours. Efren looked down at the wet concrete below his feet. It had only been a few hours, but already the school was prepared for the following week. It was nice, the same feeling he had when Ama was still home. He missed coming home from school and finding a warm meal in a clean apartment. But after this weekend, things would go back to normal. He was sure of it. Appa had the money and it would bring up Ama back. Wait up, guys, Efren called out while running to help Max down from the top of the drinking fountain. Max's poster was right above the most heavily used drinking fountain in the entire school. Efren stared at it. Everyone would see this. Maxie, don't you think we should put this somewhere else, you know, so it doesn't get wet? You know how sloppy kids are when they drink water. Efren crossed his fingers as Max tilted his head and rubbed the, the tip of his chin as if combing through an actual beard. Nope, this is good. Right, Mia? Mia looked at, uh, up at Efren, then over at the poster. Yep, this is perfect. One thing was for sure, these posters would get people talking. And if the internet had taught Efren anything, it was that, that any publicity is good pub publicity. All right, fine, but we've got a lot more posters to put up. You guys ready to move at super speed? Max and Mia got into their starting positions. Speedy Gonzalez speed. And with that, Efren's ASB presidential campaign was underway. Max raced over to the main quad area and taped a poster to a tree while Mia centered hers onto the science lab door. Efren, however, chose to start at the far end of the hallway. Just as he unrolled a poster and was about to pull the roll of tape from his pocket, he caught sight of an open door. He peeked inside and did a double take. There stood Mr. Garrett dressed as George Wash in a George Washington costume. Mr. Garrett? Poor Mr. Garrett jumped out of his skin. Geez, Efren, you practically scared me out of my wooden teeth. Wait, why are you dressed like that? Mr. Garrett's face turned bright red as he slipped the wig back into a bag. Yeah, we're going to be studying the Constitution next. I thought this might help. But what are you doing here? Putting up posters for my campaign. Efren entered the room. I have some good news about my mom. Is she back? Not yet, but she will be soon. Mr. Garrett nodded. Good, because no child should ever be separated from a parent. Speaking of children, Efren said lightheartedly, I'd better get my brother and sister. Efren shut the door now. You're going to shut the door now. Efren did his best to hide his grin so you can finish trying on your costume. Again, a flush crept across Mr. Garrett's face. That evening, Appa picked up a bag of churros for dessert on his way home. However, the real treat was getting to talk with Amma on the, tele on the phone again. Appa had asked Efren not to ask her when she was coming back, but that didn't stop Max and Mia. In fact, they took turns telling her the same things over and over again. Amma, we miss you. Amma, when are you coming back? Amma, please come home. Efren was happy just hearing her voice. 
In a few days, she'd be back home. And there was no way Efren was going to let things go back to normal. No way he was going to hide out in the bathroom reading while Amma cooked and cleaned for everyone. He would go online, look up how to make pancakes or scrambled eggs, maybe even learn how to make milagros of his own. With the sugar rush from the churros out of their system and the copy of Dr. Seuss's book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, that Max borrowed from Miss Solomon, Efren and Appa readied the twins for bed. Unlike the last couple of nights, Efren remained full of energy. He couldn't wait to hear all about the plan to bring Amma back. But something about the way Appa slouched at the kitchen table scared Efren. He approached Appa and took a seat beside him. What's wrong? Aren't you excited about getting Amma back? Just a bit nervous, that's all. What do you mean? You raised the money, right? It's not just about the money. Things are different than they were a few years ago. It's so much tougher now. <clears throat> so many people involved. Before we can plan anything, I have to get the money to your mother. How are you going to do that? Appa stared off into nothingness. Without her ID, I can't wire money to her. So I'm going down to San Diego tomorrow. There's a fence near a state park. I'm going to try and sneak the money to her. Efren flopped back onto his chair. Wait, la mi but La Migra is going gonna be there. Ice could take you too. Mijo, sometimes the best place to hide is in plain sight. I'll blend in, act like I have nothing to fear. No, you can't. Shh, Mijo, you'll wake up the twins. Efren nodded. Look, I know it's risky, but I don't have a choice. Even my friends who have permission to be here are afraid. He reached into his back pocket and pulled out a sh folded sheet of paper. Here, Efren started unfolding it. What is it? My cousin's information. His name is Miguel and he lives in Arizona. If anything happens to me, I want you to call him. He and I had a long, long talk today. He's a good guy and will come get you and the twins. A rush of panic surged through Efren's body. Appa, he said pleadingly, there has to be another way. No, mijo, there isn't. Only a born citizen is safe right now. Citizen? Efren's mind raced. Appa, I'm a citizen. Appa wasn't having it. No, ni siquiera lo pienses. The border is no place for someone your age. Maybe, but it's no place for Amma either, or you. Please, Appa, I can do this. Appa didn't answer. He simply pressed his hands together and, and sighed into them. Please, Appa, Efren repeated, I can do it. Appa wouldn't meet his eyes. Look, I've taken care of Max and Mia. I've taken them to school, bathed them, fed them, just like you needed me to. Please, Appa, let me do this for Amma. Appa rubbed the back of his neck. Efren scooted forward. You're always, you've always taken care of this family. You drag yourself to work when you've been sick or even hurt. You and Amma have given me everything I need. Let me help. This is my family too. Appa nodded to himself, then finally reached over and cupped his hand over Efren's. If we do this, we do it together. Is that clear? Yes, Appa. Together. You and me, juntos. Okay, I will call your Amma. Set everything up. Mijo? Appa swallowed hard. I am very proud of you. You are very brave. Brave is, it was the exact opposite of how he felt.